into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in. to my life Lord Jesus come in today come in to stay come into my life Lord Jesus Hello dear friends, welcome to this session and today we are going to discuss about the corporal works of mercy. If you have your Bible with you now, please turn to Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 40. In this passage, Jesus very clearly teaches us about the corporal works of mercy and their importance in our lives. So, let us read this passage together and then we shall take up each of these works of mercy for our discussion today. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at the right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. This passage brings to my mind the person of Mother Teresa, who in our own times showed us how to practice what Jesus taught us. She used to say that there are two kinds of real presence of our Lord in this world. The Lord's real presence in the Blessed Sacrament, where He fills us with His light, His life, and His love, and our Lord's real presence in the poor, both in those materially poor and those spiritually poor, where He is waiting for us to give Him back His light, His life, and His love. Living on the bread of life, we receive our Savior's merciful love, sharing our bread with those who hunger physically, and spiritually, we return that love back to Him, giving His compassionate heart solace and joy. Mother Teresa dedicated her life to picking up the poor and the suffering from the streets of Calcutta and other major cities in India and providing for them the most basic necessities, food, shelter, a blanket, and a bit of human warmth and kindness. Many were desperately sick with incurable illness, but it made no difference to Mother Teresa and her sisters of charity. They were committed to loving the poor as Jesus in disguise. What we see in the life of Mother Teresa is a shining example of a life dedicated specially to practicing the corporal works of mercy. So, we shall take up each of them for our discussion. 
The first one is to feed the hungry. There are many people in this world who go without food. When so much of our food goes to waste, consider how good stewardship practices of our own food habits can benefit others who do not have those same resources. Jesus is asking each one of us to feed those around us who have nothing to eat. The second is to give drink to the thirsty. What does it mean? It means that many of our brothers and sisters in Christ do not have access to clean water and suffer from the lack of basic necessity. We should support the efforts of those working towards greater accessibility of this essential resource. How do we practice this if we don't find anyone who is suffering from this? We need to take extra care in not to waste a drop of water unnecessarily. And the third work of mercy is to clothe the naked. It means that we need to help those around us who suffer from poverty, illness, rejection and the like. It is not enough that we give away the excess clothes that what we have to the poor. But more importantly, we also need to take good care of the clothes that we use in our day-to-day -day life. And the fourth work of mercy is to shelter the homeless. There are many circumstances that could lead, lead to someone becoming a person without a home. We may not be able to provide a shelter for anyone who is homeless, but what can we do is to go out and meet those without homes, affirming their both and helping them to seek a resolution to challenges the challenges the, they face. The fifth work of mercy is to visit the sick. Those who are sick are often forgotten or avoided. In spite of their illness, these individuals still have much to offer to those who take the time to visit and comfort them. Let us make an extra effort to go out and visit someone who is ailing from sickness. And the sixth, sixth work of mercy is to visit the prisoners. People in prison are still people made in the image and likeness of God. No matter what someone has done, they deserve the opportunity to hear the word of God and find the truth of the message of Christ. Although it may not be possible for us to visit them, we shall pray for them and for their conversion. And lastly, the seventh is to bury the dead. Funerals give us the opportunity to grieve and show others support during difficult times. Through our prayers and actions during these times, we show our respect for life, which is always a gift from God, and comfort those who mourn. Even if you don't get opportunity to bury the dead, let us say a small prayer on hearing the death of someone. So that's all for today, and when we come back next week, let us try to understand the other half of the work of mercy, that is, the spiritual works of mercy. So, till we meet again, goodbye and God bless you.